My name's Walt. I work as night watchman here at Fred's Wax Museum to put myself through criminology college. It used to be very lonely, until recently when I plugged in my crime computer. Suddenly, oscillating vibrations brought to life three legendary monsters. Dracula! The Werewolf! And Frankenstein! Creatures hated and feared for centuries, now determined to make up for their past misbehaving by fighting crime wherever they find it. Together, we're the Monster Squad! This is July, and you look just like a snowman. <laughs> and I would say that I am an icicle. <laughs> Wax museums should be air conditioned. But this is carrying a good thing too far. Gentlemen, brace yourself for some shivering news. This entire metropolis is buried in snow. <laughs> Don't make foolish jokes, Walt. This is July 4th, not April 1st. Frank, it's no joke. It's a disaster. The whole city is frozen to a standstill. Here, look out the window. That is genuine snow, all right. Take it from an expert. Something very unnatural is going on. Well, Squat, whatever it is, we can't allow it to continue. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to call the Weather Bureau. Why? Uh, they've got to have some explanation, Drac. That's their responsibility. All I'm getting is a busy signal. The whole city must be trying to call. It's almost time for Dr. Fishline's weather report. Squad, get down to the TV station and investigate it personally. We can't drive the van on those snowbound streets. I've got a feeling this whole case is going to be tough sledding. Let's go, squad. <laughs> well, watch closely now, and you will understand. Uh, yesterday, we had one anemic little cloudling hovering tentatively over uh, Medicine Bow, Montana. Yes. Uh, now, here we have our high pressure. Here we have our low pressure. Now, quite obviously, this insignificant little fluff of condensation could not leap 6,000 miles over the high or sneak half a continent under the low and dump 40 inches of snow over the entire United States. But that's exactly what happened. Excuse me, Understand? Dr. George, we're on the air. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt anything and everything to bring you this special urgent announcement from the President of the United States concerning our national snow emergency. Fifteen minutes ago, a tape-recorded ultimatum containing a horrifying threat was received at the White House from a villainous person. He calls himself the Weatherman. Now here is that tape-recorded announcement. As you poor peasants shiver pitifully beneath my beautiful blanket of man-made snow, your little brains should grasp the fantastic fact that I can control your climate and that you must do exactly as I wish or I will freeze you and flood you out of existence. Unless you go to the polls immediately and vote me as your permanent ruler, 
I shall storm you into ruin! <laughs> According to the President, the Congress, and the Supreme Court, we have no other choice. They all urgently request that every citizen slog to the polls and elect the weatherman, our new president. They will then resign and step down to save our nation. Now, back to our regular programming. We must find him tonight. Oh. Let's check in with Walt. Maybe he has a clue by now. Monster Squad calling headquarters. Come in, Walt. Hang on, Frank. I've got some important information coming out of the crime computer at this very moment. <coughs> Investigate the S. Ralph Ross Research Facility. The government has spent millions out there building machines for weather control experiments. There is a 4.78 probability factor that the weatherman is using the government's own equipment to take over the government. Got the message, Walt. We're on our way to the S. Ross Reach. To the S. Ross. We're on our way to that place. Over and out. <laughs> you know, Phoebe, I really love this Ross Research Facility. Hooking up my Thunderbus invention to their machinery here. It lets me carry out my every evil wish. <laughs> After I'm elected dictator, I think my first official declaration will be to make this my summer White House. <laughs> Why don't you make it an historical monument, weatherman? After all, it is the first place you've taken from the government. Mm, it's a good idea, David. And I'll get more of these little weatherhead girls around to keep me smiling. <laughs> Politics can be fun. Which reminds me. Did you see the surprised expression on that security guard's face when we attacked him with the Thunderbus and cryogenically froze him on the spot? No, I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, well, I'm glad we saved him for you. Show him, David. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> That's what every American is going to look like if they don't obey my wishes. <laughs> Brother man, you're going to be elected by a great majority. Majority? Who said anything about majority? I wanted it to be unanimous. If I don't get every single possible American vote, then I'm going to turn every single American into a frozen stalactite. Or is it stalagmite? One of them hangs down, the other one goes up. I never can remember those things. Oh, you'll be elected, weatherman. And the first thing I'm gonna do is steal all the gold out of Fort Knox. <laughs> now that I can control the weather, I can control the world! <laughs> Are you sure you want to control the world? Are you doubting my power? Oh, never. But the world's a little huge, though. And I would hate to see you work so hard that you lose your good disposition. <sighs> Hugeness doesn't frighten me. The huger, the better. I'll prove it. What's the hugest state in America? Oh, if you're not from Texas, it's Alaska. <laughs> Very well. Watch this. <laughs> of the two. Compared to this, I have been in tombs that were tropical. <laughs> Is there something you gentlemen
gentlemen require? Yes, my dear lady. We would like a tour of your laboratory. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a government installation and no trespassers are allowed. In two words, sco ram <laughs> Please, miss, we are tax-paying tourists who came to sunny California and got trapped in this terrible snowstorm. All we require is enough time to thaw out so that we can go vote for the weatherman. Well, in that case, I suppose it would be all right. But you cannot go beyond this room. How could we leave your lovely and gentle presence? <laughs> but you will have to fill out these visitor forms in quick That's only to be expected uh, in a government installation. <laughs> uh, Frank, you're first. Why me? Age before beauty. <laughs> Drac. If we can find a way to get me outside, if I can climb the wall and check out what's going on back in that laboratory. You leave that to me. Stein, comma, Frank in. And what is your place of birth, Mr. Stein? Uh, Cleveland, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Akron, Toledo, Wichita, and Tulsa. How could you have been born in all those places? Well, my father traveled a lot when when I was being born. Look, guys, I don't have time for your quaint little fool arounds. Maybe you just better go. Oh, please, miss, do not push us out into the storm until we get our car started again. Bruce, why don't you go outside and see what's wrong? Maybe it has stopped snowing, hmm? Huh? Oh, 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 sure, Drac. Uh, I'll just go out, uh, crawl around, look under the hood, and see what I can find. Excellent. Frank and I will stay here and keep this young lady company until you need us. <laughs> Looking good, David. I've already gotten 100% of the votes in New York. 100% of the votes in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and 126% of the votes in Illinois. I've been thinking about my first days in office, David. And I'm afraid that after burying America in 40 inches of snow, and after destroying Alaska, West Virginia, and Wyoming, that the common ordinary people are going to get the wrong idea about me. Oh, you really think so? Yes, they're going to think I'm too lenient. <laughs> but I'll have to show them the real me. Ah, I'm afraid, Mr. Weatherman, the real you is a goner. What? Is that? I'm just one of those common, ordinary people you made fun of, Mr. Weatherman. And we're not going to give you our country. Good job, Mr. Weatherman. He may have rabies. <laughs> Relax, henchperson. I'll just take care of this precocious puppy with my thunderbus. Uh... Bird's eye. Isn't that bullseye? Not when I freeze them with my thunderbus. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you threaten the weatherman? Now look at you, you're nothing but a helpless hunk of permafrost. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, I'm getting a strange kind of static. The 
the sound you hear is not static. It is teeth chattering at a temperature of 16 below zero degrees Fahrenheit. Teeth? Yes, sir. Bruce, it's coming over your frequency. Well, why can't you talk? Are you in trouble? Yes, you are in trouble. That's an SOS in Morse code. I hear you, Bruce, smart fellow. Now you're chattering a coded message to tell me where you are. Okay, Bruce, Bruce, don't leave the scene. I've got to feed that marvelous molar message into the crime computer. The weatherman has frozen and trapped me at Ross Research Facility. Others are downstairs. Try to reach them. It's too late to save me, but you have got to stop the weatherman. P.S. No flowers at my funeral, please. Send donations to the SPCA. <laughs> Just one punch, my icebound intruder, and I'll shatter you to smithereens. Or maybe I should just tip you over and watch as you break into a million tiny little snowflakes. Huh? <laughs> Better I should do both. Weatherman! Weatherman! Congratulations, you've won. How dare you interrupt from me when I'm having fun? But the president is on television announcing your landslide victory. Don't you want to watch him turn over the government? You can destroy Mr. Dandruff here during the commercial. Mm, yes, David, you're right. I've waited long enough for this moment of triumph. Dracula! Calling Dracula! Frank, come on in! Come on, you guys! Weatherman has captured Bruce. Do you copy? 10-4, old buddy. You just leave it to us. You do look familiar. Actually, my dear, I run into people all the time who think that they have met me before. It is just that I am a common type. Brad! <laughs> They've got Bruce. He's a quarter for sure unless we can get to him. All right, young lady, the charade is over. Open that door. So you aren't ordinary tourists. No. We are extraordinary crime fighters. And we are ordering you to let us into that laboratory so that we can fight one of the worst crimes we have ever seen perpetrated. Forget it, funny face. This door is electronically sealed. And these walls are two-inch solid steel. You'll never get through. Never say never. Come on, Drake. We've got to get Bruce out of the noose. Oh. Weatherman, you've rained on your last parade. Before you take another step, I suggest you turn around and look behind you. The last time I fell for that trick was in 1635. <laughs> Friend, it'll save me the trouble of shattering him to bits. What have you done to him? If you've harmed one hair on his head or on his body, we'll make you pay for it. <laughs> what I've done to your fuzzy friend is exactly what I'll do to you. David, quick, my thunderbus. So that is your secret weapon. Yes, the gun that won the West and the North, and the South, and the East. <laughs> if you had the common decency and sportsmanship of a gentleman, you'd let one of us have a thunderbuss and settle this thing in a duel. Well, I'm afraid there's only one of them in the whole world, and I've got it. Here it is, brother man. Good hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just mount you as trophies in the White House and show up that Teddy Roosevelt I hate long goodbye, so you won't have much chance for one. Oh. Now I have even more reason to freeze you unfortunate fiends. Wait. What are you doing? What, you can't eat my thunderbuzz? What do you think you're doing? 
don't expect him to answer that. To Frank is a gentleman. He never speaks with his mouth full. Don't you have any respect for a person's personal property? Did you? Flooding Wyoming? Wow. David, these creatures are insolent. I want them eliminated. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce, old boy, old wolf. We'll have you under an electric blanket in two minutes. Monster Squad to headquarters. Come in, please. Headquarters to Monster Squad. Go ahead. Send the police to the S. Ross... The, 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 to, to where we are. Tell them we've captured the weatherman, his two hench persons, and three innocent bystanders. And the case is over. Call the Weather Bureau, Walt. Tell them the new forecast is happy days ahead. Again, quoting the president, were we able to locate the mysterious patriots who saved our nation at its time of greatest need, I would naturally convey the highest honors any president can bestow. But they have vanished as quietly as they appeared. We can only hope that someday they will read the grateful message emblazoned on the hearts of our country. End of quote. Isn't that a great tribute, fellas? How lovely, uh, considering our background. <laughs> the president also pointed out that we have a real election coming soon, and he thinks it would be wonderful if all the eligible voters once again turned out 100%. If you did it once, you can do it again, said the president. You know, you guys, maybe I should tell the president who you are and let him give you the medals you deserve. Listen, we are happy just having a good friend like you who is always putting us on a pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.